Hello, Easton, and welcome to the first Rabbi's Roundtable in the new year of 2017. Hope everybody had a happy, healthy new year and that uh, the new year will be good for all of us. A um, couple of things, I think a very interesting show today, but I want to talk about, before I bring on our guests, I want to talk about the upcoming co-February lecture series at Temple B'nai Israel. Many of you know that we have been doing a, a lecture series for eight or nine years now, and um, this set of series, which will be every Wednesday night in February, and I'll give you the dates in a second, I think is going to be especially interesting. The theme is visionaries and their world-changing visions. And we have four speakers from around the area, and the country actually, who have done remarkable and really inspirational work. Um, the four speakers, and I'll talk th about them individually in a moment, Adam Green, Lori Strongen, Keisha Heith, and Judith Erger. And uh, I know them all. I am impressed with them. Each one of them has created and responded to social circumstances that for those of us who observe their work and the impact of their work, find uplifting, inspirational, and really remarkable. Um, Adam Green, who he lives in New York, started a, uh, a group called, started this amazing program called Rocking the Boat. And he does this along the Bronx River where he teaches kids to build boats and um, do all this stuff that's related to water. Some kids, he teaches how to swim. Adam says that uh, uh, kids don't build boats, boats build kids. Uh, it's, he takes kids in, in um, um, economically and um, uh, socially challenged circumstances and has developed this program that is really remarkable. Uh, one quick statistic. He had 30 kids in the graduating class this year, seniors in high school. All 30 are either going to a four-year college or a technical school uh, based on what they have learned, the discipline, the leadership skills, all the things that, uh, that Adam has started in rocking the boat. And in a minute, my first guest uh, will we'll talk about how Adam's program has influenced something that we're bringing to Easton and to the YMCA, and uh, we're, we're going to talk more about that momentarily. Uh, Lori Strongen, who will come to Temple on February 8th, created out of great sadness a remarkable foundation called the Hope for Henry Foundation, where she and her team bring a little bit of joy to children who are hospitalized and in really serious condition. Um, an another inspirational story, um, just so you'll know if the name Strong and sounds familiar to some of you. She is the daughter of, of, of Pat and Cy Strong and my dear friends. Uh, in spite of the fact that there's a friendship, her, Lori's work is really inspirational. And many of you know Keisha, community leader Keisha Haith is going to be with us. Keisha started a remarkable foundation as well entitled called the Foundation of Hope, which focuses on, on young girls, young women, primarily high school age girls, teaches them leadership skills, teaches them about economics and economic development, uh, of which Keisha is an expert and some of you know her from her work in the community. Uh, she's bringing skills and, and exposing these young women to uh, ideas and thoughts and uh, a skill set that will that will allow them to enter into leadership positions as they go from uh, high school to college and then into the world of, of, of the working individual. Very exciting, she's to be commended, uh, very bright, very innovative. And the last um, guest coming to the co-February lecture series at Temple B'nai Israel is an old friend, her name is Judith Erger. Uh, Judith started, and this, this blows me away, and I, I hope you'll see the, uh, the remarkable insight and bravery and courage that this program takes. 
Uh, she partnered with Catalyst Sports, and Catalyst Sports is a as a nonprofit company out of out of Atlanta. And uh, Judith literally helps people who are disabled climb to new heights. She takes people who are physically disabled and teaches them to rock climb. They, she gets them out of wheelchairs and off of crutches. Uh, there's actually there's a, a website that if you just Google Judith Erger, E-R-G-E-R, -E uh, you can get to Catalyst Sports and it's incredible. Kids five years old and people who are 75 years old doing these climbing walls and these outdoor experiences. These are four remarkably inspirational individuals. Um, as I said, Adam Green from Rocking the Boat will be with us on February 1st, and Laurie Strongin from the Hope for Henry Foundation on February 8th, and Keisha Haith on February 15th for the Foundation of Hope, and Judith Erger on February 22nd uh, with, with the Catalyst Sports uh, rock climbing program. Um, if you are interested, if this sounds uh, exciting and, and captures your attention and imagination, feel free to call Temple, uh, speak to my secretary Nancy, and get your name on the list for the uh, February lecture series, the co-February lecture series at Temple B'nai Israel. I guarantee you, you will not leave this series in any way but inspired and uplifted, and I urge you to come. And with that, we will be back in a moment. Programming on Channel 15 is brought to you in part by the Avalon Foundation and Avalon Theater, a leading catalyst for the arts, education, and culture for Talbot County and the Midshore. The Avalon Foundation. Leadership, a beautiful venue, and a variety of programming provide a special quality of life on the Midshore. And we are back, and you are seated at the Rabbi's Round Table. I'm Rabbi Peter Hyman, Rabbi of Temple B'nai Israel. And um, we now have a very interesting guest. I'm very excited about this. Um, I mentioned in the first segment Adam Green and his program entitled Rocking the Boat. We are bringing to Easton a, a form of that program through the very creative and good offices of our local YMCA. Um, this young man next to me, who I will introduce in a moment, I will introduce right now, actually. Adam Hollis will be directing a program entitled Take the Helm, which is, which is based on Adam's uh, Rocking the Boat program. Let me just introduce you to Adam. Uh, some of you may know him already, but uh, Adam is a graduate of the University of Maryland. He has been involved in camping and youth programming and youth education for uh, his many, many years, both as a, a before college, post college, and now you're doing it with the, exactly. with the Y. Uh, Adam is, uh, among other things, a, a newlywed, and he happens to be the son of our county manager, Andy Hollis. And we are delighted to have you at the Rabbi's Roundtable. Thank you. It's great to be here. And we're going to talk about the, the program Take the Helm. Tell me, uh, let's get some history. Of what, what inspired the Y to do this? I know Robbie is so creative and... Uh, sure. uh, the, the programs are so solid, but let's talk about it. Yeah, so we had uh, some board members that found out about the Rocking the Boat program with Adam Green in the Hunts Point neighborhood right. in the Bronx, and so they went down and visited and contacted our YMCA and said, you know, if they're doing something in the Bronx, you know, you got to have something like that in Talbot yeah. County uh, yeah. just because of our, our landscape and the waterways surrounding here. So uh, the idea kind of... Uh, surfaced here at, in Easton and we kind of ran with it from there and um, I went there a couple weeks ago and it's a truly inspiring program. It's it's incredible. It is incredible. It is incredible um, what Adam has done. Um, he was he was selected as one of the uh, uh, visionaries of the year for on, on uh, CNN a couple of years ago because okay. of this program. But uh, I don't want to interrupt. Let's talk about ours. Yeah, so so we kind of have 
seen that program in action and everything. And so uh, we're starting a program here uh, called Take the Helm at the Easton Family YMCA that is an after school program for high school students, um, 9th through 12th grade, yep. that uh, teaches the technical skills of boat building and other things like that, but also does. Um, works on some social skills and Character team building, building and, and things of that nature. And so um, it actually started um, yesterday, was our first day, and so we're, uh, we're underway now. Yeah. It's, very, it's very exciting. Um, I don't know how many people have ever been to the Bronx, but this is, Hunts Point is right on the Bronx River. And what's really unusual, and, and we are gonna be doing this here as well, uh, even, even though there, we have such proximity to water, and there is such an intimate tie between the community and the water, it's really remarkable how many people don't know how to swim, how, never, how many people have never been on the water, or have seen it as, as um, uh, an element that, that ameliorates their lives and existences. And so bringing Take the Helm to the Y not only enhances the Y's program that focuses on teaching kids to swim and leadership development, but it really, I think, will add tremendously to the, the after-school curricula that is available to our students. Absolutely. So uh, um, let's, th that's why I think it's important to, the, to, uh, to Talbot County. Uh, you may want to add something else. Yeah, I mean, uh, so in Talbot County, having grown up here and gone to high school and everything, um, when you hit high school, there's a lot of organizations that focus a lot on... Uh, elementary age kids and so the why is one of those and so you know there's not a whole lot for high school kids mm -hmm. to do as far as after school programming um, unless you're involved in sports through the high school or the arts right. like theater or something right. like that and so um, you know this is really important program for the kids that aren't involved in that that they can go somewhere after school and actually get taught those technical skills team building and all that stuff um, I, I again I, I when I was up there I, I left so inspired and so motivated, and as Adam has said, boats don't, uh, kids don't build boats, boats build yep. the kids, and the, the success rate is really something to, to look at seriously, and I have, under your leadership with, with Robbie and with Derek and the, the staff at our wonderful Y, um, I, I have every expectation that this will succeed in ways that we never even thought possible. Yeah. So uh, uh, tell me how people can get involved. What do they need to do? Yeah, so this is a, a program at the Y that is, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but this is 100% free. So there's no uh, program fee or anything, whether the kid, the high school student is a Y member or not. So anybody can join this so it is completely donor driven and yep. uh, really based on volunteers and stuff like that so if anybody is interested um, in either donating or volunteering with the Y um, you can reach out to our YMCA um, the Eastern YMCA off of Peach Blossom here in Easton and um, get a hold of myself or Derek White our executive director and um, we can definitely steer you in the right direction to get involved. No pun intended. Exactly. <laughs> steer. <yeah>. No, <laughs> and, 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 and you can always get a hold of me. Uh, I happen to have some uh, uh, strong ties with the YMCA, and uh, we will get you in the, point you in the right direction. Um, future plans, goals. I, I know yesterday, as you said, was the, f was the initial mm -hmm. launching of the program. Um, Let's just talk about long range yeah, vision so and, and where is it going to go? My out? head's already racing with some ideas just from Good. that initial uh, first day, but um, you know, kind of like Rocking the Boat did, they started out as a boat building program and have expanded now into a sailing program, an environmental program. Um, you know, we're really looking to do something like that eventually, um, you know, after this first semester. Yes. So expanding into the kids actually getting out on the water and doing some different stuff out there. Talk a little bit about their environmental program, which I, again, is, is remarkable. Yeah, so kids uh, on the Bronx River are doing water quality testing, uh, dealing with kind of the wildlife around that area and, and stuff like that, how they can kind of better the community through the environmental research and stuff that they're doing. And so, I mean, again, Talbot County is so reliant on 
the waterways and everything that goes on there that you know it's a perfect opportunity for kids that are interested in that to get out there and and kind of look into that stuff it is such an inspirational program i have i have big hopes i'm glad that you're the uh, director of it Thank i you. think uh, the choice was the right choice i'm not bringing gratuitous um, if you're interested call adam at the y get a hold of me we will we will be glad to give you a lot of information uh, this is something that we should take seriously. It has great potential, and I hope we get to reach a lot of kids who uh, may otherwise not have had a pro the, the opportunity or, or the privilege of being on the water and, and learning how to relate to the environment in, in this way. Um, any phone numbers you want them to have? Give them the Y phone number. Yeah, if you want to get a hold of myself, uh, the number at the YMCA is 410 Eight two two zero five six six. Open seven days a week, and we'll and and again, uh, that's that's the uh, that's our local YMCA on Peach Blossom. If Adam's not around, you can certainly talk to the, the director of our chapter, um, Derek Derek White, or you can also call Robbie um, Robbie Gill at the the office of the Y of the Chesapeake. Anyway, thank you, Adam, for being here yeah. and talking about take, take the Helm. You will come back because there's more to talk about this as we see it Absolutely. grow and evolve and uh, really touch the lives not only of the kids but of all of us who are involved in it. Sure. Thanks for being at the yeah. round table. Thank you. Easton, we will be back shortly. It's different than any place I've ever been. <laughs> And we are back. You're seated at the Rabbi's Round Table. And I, I'm always pleased and delighted when, when my next guest uh, joins us. You will remember, for those of you who watched the Rabbi's Round Table, we ended the last show in uh, 2016 with, a, in, with an interview uh, with both Jessica Bayless and, and Tim Weigand. And we talked about then the, um, the production of uh, the Nutcracker, which the Avalon produced and presented as their holiday play. Um, I went to see it based on their recommendation, and I have to tell you, those who didn't see it, you missed a wonderful, wonderful theatrical presentation. Well done, Mr. Thank Director. You. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you very no, much. No, Tim, I, 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 um, I, from our initial conversation, I was engaged and interested in the topic. Having seen it, I gotta tell you, I'm not being gratuitous, please understand these are, these are uh, unre unscripted and unrehearsed words. The, the talent, the level of talent was first class, without question, local though it might be, we have very talented people, and the play was even better than what you and Jess at that time, who was with us, uh, uh, talked to me about. I found it engaging, I found it poignant, I literally from the opening scene I was drawn into the message, um, both of, and, and we talked about uh, how difficult holidays can be. There's always, there's poignancy in holidays, there's, uh, it highlights and underscores both present realities and loss and, and hope. Boy, this play had it all, and you really did a great job bringing that out in the way it was staged and, and with the people who were in it. So thank you. Well, thank you very much, and thanks for coming. Everybody, no. We appreciate all the support that we get uh, for people that come to the holiday show. And, um, you know, it was, uh, it was a different play. We had uh, a lot of serious reaction to it. And, um, you know, I, I think there were some people who came... Who we, the name is is was is we just might as well just say so it's a little misleading. I mean, it's yep. not. The, I had friends of mine who I explained the play to, who said they would have actually come to the play had they known it was going to be that, but they actually thought it was the Nutcracker. Right, the classical Nutcracker. And, and it wasn't. It wasn't the Nutcracker, although it's based on the original story called the Nutcracker and the Mouse King, and and 
um, which was a grim sort of style fairy tale. Right. And, uh, you know, I mean, we could go into the specifics of it, but basically, one of the biggest criticisms about, and I know the history of the Nutcracker play, because I had to kind of understand that to do this one, one of the criticisms about the Nutcracker play, uh, the, the actual Nutcracker, yeah. the musical, is that nothing really happens right. in it. You know, in, 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 in drama, in theater, as in you know, any sort of, there has to be a conflict. There has to be of something course. at stake. And in the Nutcracker, the, 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 the muse of the ballet, yeah. you know, the, the, the first half part of the play is them having their party and they have the dancing dolls and uh, then they have the, you know, the, they have the fight with the, with the Mouse King. And then they go on to these sort of, you know, fairy tale areas of the, right. of the mind or wherever, the, whatever Tchaikovsky was yeah. But there's no, there's no conflict. There's no, there's no, no entertainment. You're, you're just watching yep. people go through like. Yep. So, you know, in that, for that part, I felt really good. We there was a there was a problem to be solved in in, in the play that we did, and again, I think you know, a lot of the actors did a really really nice job. Oh, I I thought uh, David Mar, I, I don't know, but David Marmelstein was terrific, and. Um, um, Jen, uh, Jen Coleman. And they were the mothers and father. Yeah, yeah the mo the mother and the. I, I, she, I, I was blown away and how talented and those the kids. You, for those of you who didn't see it, um, we'll, we'll talk about um, the casting in a minute. But there were there were some really young elementary school kids who had great voices, who took stage direction, and uh, and uh, you know it's not always easy dealing with kids that age. Right. And you again, not being gratuitous, you did a great job. I mean, uh, what I found. Interesting. I, I see. I think the title "Nutcracker" is, is was very well chosen because there was a tough nut to crack here. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that yeah. is the, the 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 reality of loss and the way the family member was was killed in in, in war and current current times. Yeah, absolutely. And that's as a clergy person, you know, I deal with that. So maybe I related it to it a little bit differently. But uh, uh, holidays intensify loss. Right, yes. They bring us great joy, uh, but they, they also intensify the sense that, that what it used to be is not how it is anymore. Right. And yes. that, that's what I thought the play captured so beautifully and was, I found, wonderfully uplifting. There were some very funny moments and some very poignant and tear-filled moments. Right. And, uh, yeah, I think that I think that that was uh, the met. You know, we you know just so we work like we changed the ending. You didn't see the original ending that because you, you came on the Wednesday. Right, I came Wednesday. Um, I, did, did was the Nutcracker buried at the end of the play when you? We changed that ending for the first three shows. The act, they take the Nutcracker that had come to life and that's back into its toy form, and they actually bury it where that tr where the tree grew yeah. at the end. They buried it there, and then we. So, getting to your point of, uh, you know, we changed the ending. We and we changed it after that. We we're always working on the play right. because um, you never know how how it how it's going to come out. Um, for some people, that burial at the end mm -hmm. was just a bit too much. Okay. Um, and uh, but what to me, what it was signifying, you know, there, there's some lines in there that we cut. Also, she asks the the, the girl who Cla Clara, Clara, who is the same Clara as in the in the and in, in this play, you know, her, her, the Nutcracker, she doesn't fall in love with the Nutcracker, but she loves the Nutcracker just as much because the Nutcracker is actually her brother. Right. And right. she says, can we have Christmas again? Correct. And that was kind of like the, the whole coming around of, yes, you do suffer loss. And yes, the people are not going to be there who have been in their life. But at this time of year, or at that time of year, at Christmas every year, we're still allowed to celebrate the season, and that's no. what the play sort of, to me, uh, had was partly of what it was trying to say. And it, I, I felt you communicated that very powerfully. And again, in, in my, what I do professionally, after a loss, I hear people say, "How are we going to right Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, right. what, whatever it is?" Right. The poignancy, the abrupt. It doesn't matter how long death takes, whether it's a short death, you know, or somebody lingers and suffers. The, the, from that point on, it's r remarkably and dramatically different. Yes. And people ask that question. 
And again, I, I, I well, thank you for pointing that out because uh, you know we did hear from people. I mean, even friends who were you know I was with a colleague upstairs Tuesday, Wednesday. And we just talked about it, and I knew that because you know, I didn't get the normal. You know, normally, when we do a play here, it's something that people are really familiar with, and they are come up to you right away. Mm-hmm. And when you go out at night and they say, oh, it was great, it was fantastic, we loved the play, it was so great. This this time people, I would walk in and they would say hi, Tim. And then I would <laughs> go over and walk by there and say, you know, we, we, we went to the play, we saw it, we really liked it. And I, I, I could tell, I was like, it affected you, oh. but maybe it affected you in a way that you didn't really like. But again, you know, I am very, I'm very proud of the cast. I'm Should very be. proud of Jess and Kate Levy and myself for picking it, but I am also really proud that it was actually a play that people went home and talked about, and maybe they didn't like it, but they talked about it, and that is what, and it sounds cliche, but that is what theater does. That's what entertainment Not should do. It, yeah. it, it, it generated, and I will tell you, to your comment about people going home, um, Marsha and I, uh, my mother was visiting, and we brought her. And and in the car, my mother had all these. She, she first of all, she thought the kids were fabulous, and right. very talented, and uh, right. And and she talked about how meaningful she found the premise. You know, how do you do? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, how do you how do you continue and allow yourself moments of joy? When <coughs> excuse me. When moments of joy are eclipsed by the reality of life and living. Right. And, you know, I think <coughs> that what, you know, the authors were trying to say, and, and that play will continue to be worked on. I imagine in 30 or 40 years it'll probably be really popular. I think people will get used to it. As long as you see it, you know, I don't know that we can do it again anytime soon, but, <coughs> but, but I think what the play was trying to say was the season is enough if you let it be enough. It is, you know, it, you know, you know. There, there were references to, and that's a season for everybody. It's just there's a, it's the closing of the year, and you know, however you celebrate it, people are different in that time of year. They may be sadder, a lot of them are happier, but people are changed. There's something different going Without on. Without question. And we can, we should take advantage of that yep. for seven days a year yep. or however hour it goes. Um, ten days, whatever it is. Yeah, ten days. Yeah. You know, and and. Uh, and I think that the play says, hey, you know, we're all going through the same type of thing. I mean, everybody, everybody goes through it. Absolutely. And I just wanted, I felt that based on the, the last time you were on and the fact well, that thank you saw you. it, yeah, I, 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 you've, heard me, you've heard me say this to them, you've heard me say this a lot. We are fortunate to have the Avalon, uh, the creative staff that we have, um, their vision and, and their desire to bring things to the community that not only challenge us, uh, challenge us, but uplift us. And I think you did a great job. Well, thank you. Thank you for what you did in the cast and uh, the creative team that you work with. Uh, it made a powerful, at least for me, it made a powerful statement. It, it did for a lot of people. Some, some people, some people. Well done, Tim. Thank you. Well really. done. Thank you very much. Welcome to the first show of 2017. I look forward to uh, our next uh, get together. You've been seated at the Rabbi's Roundtable. We'll see you next time, Easton. Bye-bye.